the difference between append and extend in python so both are list methods and let's see each one of them one by one so i am making this list and adding one two one two three and uh, let's use append function uh, append method method on this so i will write li that is my list name dot append four so, and now i will print this list let's see what the output will be and one minute again yeah see so the output is one two three four so this is what append does so it will just append whatever we add whatever number we write so in this case we are writing four so it will append it to the list and also remember one thing that you can only append one one item in the iterable you cannot append more than one item so if i write four comma five now let's see what the output will be so it will give an error that append takes exactly one argument and two is given so in append we can give only one argument so you can add only one item to your iterable more than one item will not be appended so remember this now let's see what extend method does so as the name uh, name suggests extend method will extend your list whatever argument you give in extend method that will be added to your list and your list will be extended so extend will iterate over its argument and it will add each element to the existing list and it will extend the list okay so now let's see so i write li dot extend and i will add an iterable so always remember that uh, you have to pass an iterable in the extend method so now the output will be like this one two three one two three now you can also give tuple so first there were square brackets that uh, that was list now uh, circular brackets which is tuple so you can also add tuple so iterables basically so one two three one two three now if i change 10 20 30 the output will be one two three 10 20 30 so that is extend method now if i write hello uh, i am adding string so it will be it will be considered as an iterable so it will take h e l l o so if you write hello it will not consider it as a word but it will consider it as an iterable so it will iterate over its argument it will and it will add each element into your existing list now if i write append the same thing if i write for append li dot append hello now let's see the output so as you can see the entire word hello is considered so as i already mentioned earlier that append will consider it as one element okay you can add only one item to your list hence it will be considered as hello but in case of extend it will be considered as iterable now if i just add four it will give an uh, error that int object is not iterable so you always have to add an iterable in your extend method so you cannot just write four because int is not iterable so you have to write it in the form of list or tuple this is the major difference between extend and append let's understand the basic difference between the three these three are used to store data obviously so the basic difference is that array is mutable mutable means the values can be changed inside array whatever you have values in the array they can be changed list is also mutable but tuple is immutable you cannot change the values in tuple once the values are added in tuple you cannot alter it the second thing is they are ordered collection of items all the three are ordered collection of items what that means is now if you are adding these items say in list you are adding these four items mango strawberry orange apple banana so the they, they will be stored in ordered manner so when you write ltv1 and in brackets you write give me the value for zero zeroth index so mango will be given first index strawberry will be given second index orange is there third index apple is there so basically they are ordered one after the other so all the three are ordered and the third uh, the third difference is that arrays can store only similar data types so array will store only similar data type but list can store more than one data type you can store string integer everything all together in one one list you can store and in case of tuple also uh, you can store more than one data type this is an example of how you can create an array or list or tuple so in case of array you can write a is equal to arr arr is basically when you import array 
as ARR. So we write A is equal to ARR dot array. And then I stands for integer. And then in brackets, you write values you want to add in the array. And for list, you simply have to write it in square bracket. On whatever integer or string or whatever you want to put, just comma separate it and add it in the list. And you use square brackets for it. But for tuple, you use circular brackets. The basic difference is that array and list are mutable, but tuple is immutable. Values cannot be changed. And your circular bracket is used, your, your both the places square brackets is used and your only one one data type can be can be stored but in list and tuple more than one data type can be stored this is the basic difference the difference between break pass and continue in python so let's begin with break so break statement dominates the current loop and control of the program flows to the sta next statement so basically whenever you encounter with the word break and inside a loop it will come out of that loop so as you can see this example there is a list of uh, names of, of fruits and uh, there's a for loop and if uh, and inside the for loop if i is equal to equal to apple uh, there's a break statement so it it has to come out of the loop as you can see the output our output will be apple found and count will be 4 because every time it's going inside the loop count is increasing it starts with 0 and then it becomes 4 when i remove the break statement the count will become 7 why because because uh, it will print apple is equal to found but it will keep iterating it will go on to the next iteration as well because break statement is not there so count will become seven but if uh, break is there the output will be four why because after apple is encountered it will come out of the loop so it will count will not be, uh, be incremented this is what break is now let's see what is continue the continue statement instructs a loop to continue to the next iteration unlike a break statement a continue statement does not completely halt a loop you can use the continue statement in python to skip over a part of a loop when a condition is met so basically this is not like break this will go on to the next iteration so let's say i have a list of numbers and i do not want those numbers that are divisible by 10 so what i'm going to do is so there's a list of numbers and there is a for loop for i in l i the list and if if i mod 10 is equal to equal to 0 then continue so what this is doing is whenever it finds a number that is um, that is divisible by 10 it will continue it will go to the next iteration and hence it will not print it so as you can see only 333 3, 54 7 and 8 are printed these are all the numbers that are not divisible by 10 so in the for loop first it will go to 10 so is 10 mod 10 equal to 0 yes so it will continue it will go to the next iteration which is 20 is 20 mod 10 equal to 0 yes so again it will go to the next iteration which is 333 is 333 mod 10 equal to 0 no so then it will print it so it will print 333 and then it will go to 54 is 54 mod 10 equal to 0 no and hence it will print it and so on it will print all those numbers that are divisible that are not divisible by 10. unlike a break statement continue will go to the next iteration break completely comes out of the loop but in case of continue we will continue we will go to the next iteration and that is what continue is all about now let's see what is a pass statement. So pass is a null statement. The interpreter does not ignore a pass statement, but nothing happens and the statement results into no operation. The pass statement is useful when you don't write the implementation of a function, but you want to implement it in the future. Now what this means is pass is just simply a null statement and it does nothing. Let's see an example. The first example is a uh, function one and we have simply just written pass over there. Now, if we run this, the output will be nothing. It will be nothing. But if we remove this pass statement, then we will get an error. So suppose you want to create a function, but you don't, do not know what you want to implement in it. You want to do it in future. So what you can do is simply you can write pass over there. Now, let's see another example. Here we have a for loop in range 10, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If I mod 3 is equal to 0 then it then it it has a pass statement which basically means it will do nothing else it will print i so let's see the output as you can see the output only has numbers that are 
not divisible by 3. And that is all about past statement. Between list, tuple, set, and dictionary. So this is a this is an important question in Python. They are used to store and organize the data in an efficient way. They are used to store collection of data. All the four are used to store data. So let's see the uh, difference between the four one by one. List, tuple, set, and dictionary. So list is basically like array, like a dynamic array. Ordered non-homogeneous data structure. Ordered means they are indexed so basically this is at zeroth index this is at first index second index data or elements are put in it or in an ordered manner and non-homogeneous means you can put any data type in it it need not be of the same data type but in case of tuple tuple also it is ordered and this is also non-homogeneous only but in case of set you must have studied sets in maths also uh, in sets you cannot have duplicates so this is an unordered collection data type if you add another 4 over here, it will not take. Duplicates are not allowed in sets. Sets will only have unique values. And in case of dictionary also, this is also unordered. So basically set and dictionary are unordered. List and tuple are ordered. So in case of dictionary, dictionary is basically, it holds key value pairs. It's like a map. Key and value pair is there. So how you define it, you put curly bracket and inside that it's comma separated. So A is one key, then you write colon and then one is your value. So key value pairs. So like this, you can put as many key value pairs you want to put. You can put this inside curly brackets. This is how you define a dictionary. In case of list, we use square brackets as I have written over here. List can be represented by square brackets. Tuple is represented by circular brackets. And set, is also, set and dictionary are represented by curly brackets. Set is basically duplicates are not allowed and it is mutable. And in case of dictionary, all you have to remember, it, uh, it has key value pairs. Here, the keys cannot be duplicate. Now, you cannot have another A key over here. The values can be repeated, but keys cannot repeat. List is mutable. What do you mean by mutable? You can change the values in it. You can change the index at uh, first position or you can change the sorry you can change the value at second uh, second index or you can change the value at any particular index you can change it but tuple tuple is immutable you cannot change values inside a tuple okay. so this is the major difference between list and tuple list is mutable tuple is immutable these two will allow duplicate elements because they are ordered 0 1 2 3 so this is the basic difference whenever you are asked all you have to do is you can you, you can talk about their mutability if if this is mute this is mutable this is immutable this is mutable and your duplicate keys are not allowed and then you can you, you can talk about uh, how they are represented and if duplicates are allowed or not these are major differences which you should remember while answering answering the question where you're asked the difference between the four whether they are ordered or not how they are represented and if duplicates are allowed and if they are mutable or not